give me a second. Ah, oh, man. I'm getting... <laughs> G'day you absolute drone legend, Stu from UOV Futures here and today, well, my disappointment is immeasurable. My day is ruined because we are going to be talking about a product which has made me pull my hair out literally on more than one occasion and it's very rare for me to say this. I, I really can't find too much positive things to talk about in this video and I want to show you exactly what we've gone through because you're not going to believe how much of a nightmare experience this was. I think that, is that not the biggest murder wasp you've ever seen just cruising around like, hang on, I'll, I'll be back with like a full on, I'm freaking out here, that wasp is going to kill me. Give me, give me a second, oh man, I'm getting... <laughs> Where was, I don't know if that came up on the camera. That, that thing's going to murder me if it comes back in here. But today, we're talking about this. So this is from Beta FPV, and it's like the Cetus S X kit or something like that. And Stuart, why do you have two of them? Because they are just... Oh, I don't know how to say this. They are not great. I did not enjoy them. The first, what we're going to do in this video, we're going to break it down. I'm going to show you what you get, and then I'm going to show you my experiences trying to go out and fly it around and film a review in the first time. Then we're going to try and show you what happens the second time. And then finally, I need to make this clear of why products like this are just absolutely terrible for the hobby. Usually, you know, you can find a positive in a lot of things. However, in this one, it is absolutely detrimental to our experience. The wasp is just buzzing literally right behind the camera here. I don't know what to do about that. So, um, all right, sorry for freaking out about the wasp. We're back, thanks for staying with me. Uh, and also, if you watch this video, I'm gonna be giving these out to my patrons if you need them for spares or parts, because that's sort of the only thing I think they're good for. So uh, let me know if you're one of those people and uh, we'll try and organize you something. However, let's have a look what this is. This is the Cetus X or the Crow Kit or something like that and it's aimed to be like a kit you can pick up, get flying and get started in FPV. It comes in a little carry case which is fair enough. You open it up, you get your drone which I don't hate but the user experience I absolutely do hate. Uh, you get a pair of goggles um, right here which uh, look they're not anything special whatsoever. I don't even know, I don't think they're even diversity. I don't like the menu. The first one that I did get, uh, it didn't work. So it, it was like it was splitting the screen on an awkward, it was like it was off-centered and didn't look very good. Uh, the next one, although the picture was centered, it has a very hard time cycling through the menus and setting channels and things like that. Um, you've got your little radio, which binds up as well. Um, it's ELRS, which look, I, I do like that. I've got to say the radio, I think, is probably the strongest part in all this. The problem is, the ecosystem that it's rocking is just an absolute nightmare. So this isn't using your standard beta flight. I'll put the name of it. I can't remember what it's called for some different versions on the screen. Um, and it does, the way that it's set up is so not intuitive. So when you go out to fly, you've got your arm switch, then there's like a button which mucks up your VTX channel or changes it. And then you've got to cycle through and try and find it on here, but there's no representation of what you're looking at. It's the entire way that this is set up is so detrimental to having a good time. And not only was my first one broken and didn't work, and then I couldn't even get it to launch or connect or fly or do anything like that. The second one, it was almost just as bad. And I've been in this hobby for almost 10 years. What is someone meant to do if they purchase this and then they're trying to have a good time? This might be, they might look at it and think, yeah, this is good, I wanna get that, that looks really fun. Uh, that's not gonna be the case for this. I feel I've gotta give a bit of a warning about this product because two, thing, two things need to happen. Number one, people need to not buy it because it's gonna be detrimental to the hobby and the flight experience. And number two, hopefully this is gonna go back to beta FPV and um, they can sort of look at how their product is going to be used and designed and if I'm struggling with it, how is it going to be for a newcomer coming into the hobby? I think it's just not a good fit or look or just a good product that you want. The price, I don't even know. I, I don't think I would even purchase this thing for a flying kit if it was about 50 bucks. What we're going to do before I show you the pros and cons, because I know it's a pretty uh, bit of an interesting video, we're going to get out to the field. We're going to try and show you some of the DVR that I had to record separately. Um, I've tried to do this thing a few times. It just never went well. And then we're going to come back here, wrap it up, and show you some other considerations that I think might, you might be much better suited off to get instead. So let's do it. Have some fun in three, two, one. Boop. Radio out here in the field with old man Raven and even an old man checking out some FPV with the Cetus X ready to fly kit. We're going to be talking about the flight characteristics, what it's like, who's it for, 
see what Raven thinks as well. He's testing out his new phone in the background, so we'll see how it goes. Have some fun and find out, is it a right kit to buy? Should you get it or should you give it a miss? All right, let's do it. Alrighty, so we're about to take off. I think I've got an SD card in here. Let's see how pre I even do. Very prepped. Uh, turn the goggles on. I do like the little slider switch rather than a button or anything. I'm like, okay, I can, I'm down with that. Ready to cruise. Uh, Raven, you're not going to like focusing on these again because we've got a bit of short-sightedness. Uh, I'm yep. on borderline, I think, just looking at it like this. The radio still feels like a toy, but not a terrible toy. So we'll turn this on. Hopefully it turns on. Got our little, little song and dance. Should be ready to rock and roll. All right, let's find the DVR. Yeah, that's nice. It's a uh, actual little red recording button. I like that. Yep. Yep. And good, nice little tip. You got to press it twice. How dumb is that? Let's do it. All right. So I think this is. I haven't checked the instructions for what. Well, that's making the screen flicker and bad VTX signal. Is it changing the VTX channel? Surely not. That'd be interesting to have on a switch. Well, it might be, but let's see if we can... Oh, is it arm? Okay. There we go. So what's arm? It's really quiet. It is. I don't even know that was on. Let me... Okay, okay, this is arm. It's getting affected by the wind just a little bit, but we've got to find the VTX channel. Let's search this. Let's use auto search. Don't tell anyone, but I'm using auto search right now. One trick to auto search is to move away from your quad and do it, because then it'll generally pick up, hopefully, the strongest channel. I don't like how the OSD2 doesn't tell me what channel it's on, so that part's a little bit annoying. A little bit. Uh... This one is for Beta FPV. Uh, I'm trying to do the product and the test and we're getting nothing out of the drone. So we've got a short little hover. Uh, the goggles seem to be a bit sketchy from the start. It's not binding. We're not even getting anything on the frequency. So I'll send you some emails in this video. Um, hopefully we can figure something out. All right, I am gonna record the DVR on this little screen though. It just makes my job so much easier. I just gotta quickly find us. Oh, we just got us on R6. It's like it, okay, we're good. We are about to take off. I will start this recording. Well, that's the off button. All right, we're recording the DVR here. Let's go over here and have a little fly. Okay, putting this on. First thing I notice, I really don't like these goggles. They make me feel a little bit cross-eyed. I'll put the, oh, the antennas up. Uh, it's... I know you get, you sort of get what you paid for. I don't find them uncomfortable or anything like that. And I actually don't mind these radios. They do feel cheap, but they're not tiny. So if you've got a little bit of a larger hand, they're okay. Um, feeling a little bit cross-eyed. We're in fast mode. I think the drone should be good. Oh, that's just changed the VTX. Don't press that button. What has that done? All right, that button is bad. That, that's the arm button. All right, let me plug and replug. Because I feel like one of those is lose all video. <laughs> Don't press that button. All right, and we had to wait for ages last time, right? And getting a little bit of light leakage. Man, this is like what happened last time. So this was my problem. I just, you, what's the point of having one button? I don't know what you think, Steve, but like, why would you want a button that sort of makes everything not work on your radio? It's stupid. And then it takes forever to come back. Like, look, I can still do a hover. Is that it? Please be it. All right, so we're getting some hovering. Look, I think this is, this must be the mode. From memory, one does angle, normal, acro, and then, slow, normal, fast. 
Okay, okay. So it's got it. It feels poppy. All right, we're gonna land. I'm hoping we can get that video back. Come on, video. I need you. Unless we've gone to a totally another channel. I bet. What's the bet that that's happened? From the SD button on the controller, yeah. From this button. Yeah. I bet you it's. It has. How stupid is that? Okay. And for you, that's right below your normal arm. What well, is it? Is my arm bite? Why would you want yeah. something that cycles channels? Look, I bet you I press it again. Okay, this is like change channel button. That is so dumb that it's on the radio. I really hate that. Let me search. Okay. Here's a new plan. We are going back to my Skyzone DVR because I can work that. I'm going to search with that, find out what it's on because it also doesn't tell you on here. And then uh, we'll go from there. Sleep up six. Yes, please. All right. Do not press that other <laughs> button, Stuart. Whatever you do. It says we are in M mode, which I'm hoping is manual. We're on fast. Uh, this is arm. Um, we are armed, I think. Doesn't tell me, but all right, we're off. The drone itself, uh, I am getting a little bit, oh, I've lost it. Can you see me? Yeah, mate. I've completely lost it. Drop your video. Yes. Where was I? Oh yeah, yep. I wonder, hang on, I wonder if I can still get this back with my skills. Well, it might. Uh, so, this is the second time that I've tried to do this video. This happens every time when I try to get this kit. I don't know if I am doing something wrong, but as someone who's been in the drone industry for like 10 years, and this is going out to you, Beta FPV, I really don't like a product that is like this. So, why does it? Why does a button change it on your radio? It's not simple. It's not intuitive. Please stick to beta flight and the normal way that things work and look you can try different things but if you're a newcomer coming into this this is going to really put somebody off off the drone it shouldn't be that hard to select the channel if you're going to cycle through all those things don't have all the options don't have the 48 channels inside the screen unless it just seems completely redundant and ridiculous i don't know steve what was your experience um with my original seat so did you you're, you have the same radio mm. Uh, mine was a light, light 2 SE with the little, little uh, switches. Yes, yes. But it's the same layout. So yes. I always used to hit the video by accident when I was flying around. Was my house. And it had a video button? Yeah, same as that. Well, and what is, what's the point of that? I don't know. It's, it's a pain. You're flying through the house, learning to fly. That's what these are aimed at. They're a learner kit. That's what I learnt with. And every time you hit the button, you lose video, you crash into stuff. Not happy. Did you find it annoying to cycle through or find videos Very to find annoying. it? Yeah. I used to just use auto search, but then obviously your range, it's not as locked on. So and that's not telling me what I'm on either. No. So, no. I don't know. Yep. Difficult. Yep. Very difficult. Yeah. It seemed to go all right, the drone though. It did. It yeah. did. But, I don't know. Maybe I can do some, some line of, like, if you look at this, can you hold this for two seconds? Yeah, the drone itself, we can focus on, actually had some pop. As a product, I don't really like it. I mean, I like the batteries it comes with. I actually don't mind the drone and the radio and the parts as individual parts are okay. And this is where people often talk about synergy and coming together being the greater than the, the whole is larger than the individual parts, but that's not what this is about. When these parts are all working together, it actually is not a good user experience. So uh, this is one of those products that looks great, seems like it should go well, but uh, I, don't feel comfortable recommending it if you want to learn to fly or have a good time with FPV because I am struggling to have a good time with it, uh, let alone how a beginner has had with it as well. And Steve's had some issues with his beginner one. So anyway, right here, so there it is. There's my review of the Cetus. And I know I'm gonna give a shout out to Steve. I don't think Raven was with me the first time. This review has taken a long time because I had to wait for the second one to get shipped. Um, and it wasn't much better in the end anyway. And then a big shout out to, yeah, Steve and Raven. I know Steve has the original Cetus. He didn't much like that. He said it bobbled around all the time. It was like a brushed version. Things I like about this kit, look, it's not all completely terrible as a whole. 
disgusting, I don't like it. Beta FPV, the biggest thing you need to do is just get it working nice and succinct. Don't use your own firmware, just rock it with beta flight. We don't need VTX switches or anything like that. Just make it work so you can easily pick this up and fly, get the OSD working and the goggles synced up. If you're gonna have a goggle like this, which is a nightmare to navigate, just put it on eight channels or something or make it, it just, it all needs to work succinctly. You don't want to get lost mismatching, the drone's not talking and changing modes, The uh, you're changing things when you're pushing here with the receivers and blah blah. It's just not a nice user experience. But the things I do like, I like the radio by itself as an individual, I get, I'm going to say absolute budget entry radio. It feels okay in the hands. There is definitely some much worse toy ones out there. This is nothing like the Pocket, which is a, a big recommendation. Let me grab that. The, the size is okay, but the pocket, this is a real radio. And of course it's a bit more expensive, but this is, I guess, the budget radio that I would be more than happy to use every day. If someone said, hey, you can only use this, fine. This, that's how good this little budget pocket radio is. So this radio here, right here, it's probably, I think, the strongest part of it. The goggles, I did not really like at all. Not only did I feel a little bit cross-eyed, I found it very awkward to sort of go through and start using and recording the DVR and the menus. and. It was a very non-responsive goggle and trying to get on the correct channel. I wanted to pull my hair out on more times than one. Um, and then the drone itself, the crazy part is I think it's got potential to be okay, but it does not perform. So I like the motors. I love the props. The props you get here are these little jam fan props. I should say it runs on 2S. I don't think I ever mentioned that at the start. So. I'm gonna be using the props on my Lightning, which is an amazing little build. You can see a video up there or something like that. Um, the motors are okay, they're plug and play, I guess, so you can, you know, if you do need to replace them. Um, the frame is all right, but other than that, I just, I don't like it. So, uh, sorry there, Beta FPV. This, I really tried. Like, I try to find a positive in a lot of the videos that I do. Not every drone has to be the best at everything, but often they're like, this is a great beginner kit, or this is great for races, or if you're into time trials, whatever it may be, often there's a drone kit or a product you can find really good points about, and you find some things that don't work as well. This one, I, it, it's really, left me kind of in a, with a very sour taste in my mouth for beginner bind and fly kits. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some others in the link down below. My biggest recommendation if you wanna have a lot of fun um, and move forward in the hobby, get yourself like a little pocket radio, even like a little tiny whip or a second hand set of analog goggles is going to go much further than these things. Some old school fat sharks, some Omway V1s if you happen to be lucky enough to find something like that because this as it is, I just, I don't like it. And not only that, look, my first one was kind of broken, then it refused to talk to the drone and the modes are changing. And then the second one, the flight experiences were pretty much just as bad. So anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think. I really tried on this one. Beta FPV, I, I really did. Like, this is the second kit that I've got. I've already done the first video and I had to write to them and say, man, you gotta send me another one. I don't just wanna do one video based on one thing. And the experience, I thought I'd give them the benefit of the doubt, try it again, and that's why this video is a little bit late. I should apologize for them for that as well. But um, yeah, don't, I don't, I don't like this Cetus kit. And one thing I wanna mention before we go, if you're one of my Patreons, uh, please put a little message down in the Patreon chat or something like that. We'll try and find a way. Maybe you can, use, maybe you need a radio, maybe you wanna take this apart and use the screen or the motors or something like that. Uh, we'll try and ship these out to you. Um, I'll put a post over there on Patreon. If you're interested in signing up, um, I think I've got like, 30 members or something like that. We're almost at the $200 mark a month, so please, uh, if you like the channel, you like what I do, you like the reviews, your help would be greatly appreciated. And we might be able to get some of these out to you as well. Other than that, subscribe for more FPV related content. Hope you guys on YouTube enjoyed that. Sorry, beta FPV, this is just um, poorly executed. It, if it just worked, I think it would have been pretty decent. But anyway, on that, subscribe for more FPV related content. And as always, Happy flying.